personal. It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so right now I'm out here in nature, just relaxing and um, seeing what uh, Japan has to offer as far as nature. It's a, it's a beautiful park, by the way. It's a very beautiful park. It's uh, the name of it. I think is uh, Shen Shensuke Park or something like that. I, I'm probably getting it wrong, but uh. Beautiful park out here in uh, Ota City, Tokyo. So uh, yeah, really enjoying this. But while I'm here out in nature, and you know, my my thoughts are nice and relaxed and calm and measured, uh, I figure we talk some more boxing, give you guys that world class content because um, there's always content to give you guys. Now I wanted to talk more about Ryan Garcia because yes, we know that he wasn't good enough on the night to de to defeat Tank Davis, and that's okay. But his career isn't over. His story will go on. The show will go on. And that's what I want to talk about, which is what is next for Ryan Garcia, because now he's at 140, you know, a weight class that has a lot of names, a weight class that, you know, has a lot of depth. But ultimately, it's a weight class where you really, really think about it and take a look at it. It's a lot of aging fighters. So the weight class is going to go through a bit of a makeover in the next couple of years. So uh, let's talk about it. So Ryan Garcia at 140, this is a weight class now where he will have a better weight cut. You know, he won't be as... Um, weak when he goes into the fights and he'll probably retain a bit more of his power and strength earlier in the fights which will make him a more dangerous fighter but for ryan garcia it's not even just about power he's got to i think really clean up his whole overall fight game because it's, it's great to be an offensive defensive fighter but you need to have some defense you need to have, understand positioning and there's just some things from ryan garcia that you know need to change they need to they, they need to change quickly and swiftly because um we want to see him maximize his potential. I feel like Ryan Garcia doing good and being relevant and being a factor and, and even being a champion is good for boxing. It's good for boxing, you know, because Ryan Garcia is one of the few fighters that has a casual fan base and has, you know, the hardcores that pay attention to him as well. So it makes a lot of sense if he's if he's doing well in boxing. But, um, you know, I, I, when I think of him at 140, I, th I think of three fights. There's three fights I think, for Ryan, I, I think about for Ryan Garcia at 140. I wanted to kind of go through them, and if I don't name a name that you guys think about, you can drop one in the comments and, t and tell me why you want to see Ryan Garcia fight these guys at 140. But right now, as it stands, Ryan Garcia is not ranked in any other governing body but the WBC. He's ranked number eight as the number eight contender at 140 by the WBC, meaning that he'd probably have to go the Regis Progre route. Now, I like Regis Progre, but Regis Progre, I believe, is about 33 or 34 years old, aging, you know, um, on top of that. He's having a hard time, you know, getting fights. It's, it's very difficult for him, for him to get fights. So by the time Ryan Garcia gets into title contention, like real serious title contention, Regis might either be, you know, out the weight class or out of boxing. He might just retire uh, due to age and inactivity. It's just, that's that's how it's going for him right now. But um, before he even gets to the title, I, there, there's three fights for him that I think would be uh, make a lot of sense, and I'll run through them for you guys. Now, we'll start with number one because I think number one is the most interesting one out of all of them, and that is the fight between... Ryan Garcia and Rolando Roli Romero. Now, Roli's fighting Ishmael Barroso for the WBA title um, May 13th. And if he wins that title, it makes even more sense because then it'll be a chance for Ryan Garcia to become a world champion. Now, these guys have history. Um, they've sparred together. Uh, they had the infamous sparring session, which, which is really where Roli made his name in boxing. And, uh, you know, there were parts of that sparring session where, where Roli was getting the better of Ryan. So, It'd be really great to see that, that storyline reignited in the pros. And uh, it's a big-ass dog over there. I don't know if y'all can see. That's a big-ass dog. Anyway, it'd be really interesting to see uh, that whole you know storyline get reignited uh, for a world title. Because I think, I think Roley will bring out the best in Ryan as far as from a promotion standpoint. I feel like Roley has actually matured since they sparred. He's actually become a better fighter. And... Um, yeah, it, I think it would it would it would do a lot for both guys as far as legitimacy is concerned. You'd have Ryan Garcia, a taller, longer, rangier fighter, taking on a, a shorter, stockier, more explosive guy. I think it's a good style matchup, and I think it's a fight that uh, you know, if Roley wins the world title against Barroso, who he's going to be a favorite against, you know, that's a fight they should look into. So there's that fight. Then you got Jose Ramirez, right? Now Jose Ramirez is on the way out, but Jose Ramirez by beating him. 
Ryan Garcia would get credibility from beating Jose Ramirez. Um, Jose Ramirez is a guy that, let's be real, he didn't fight Regis Progate for the world title because he's trying to cash out. We know Ryan Garcia coming off of a pay-per-view that, 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 that just did 1.2 million buys in the fifth highest gate ever in Las Vegas for any big-time boxing event. That would definitely give Jose Ramirez the kind of money he's looking for and the kind of status and notoriety he's looking for by fighting Ryan Garcia. And factor in that he's a draw on the West Coast. Ryan's a draw on the West Coast. It makes perfect sense. Um, Jose Ramirez, good fighter, former champion, on the back nine, almost in the clubhouse. But he's a guy that, you know, would make for entertaining fight style-wise, Ryan, because he's a left-hook dominant fighter. He throws left hooks the way the amount of times fighters are supposed to throw jabs. And he's become over-reliant on the left hook. Ryan Garcia's best punch is the left hook. And they say in boxing that you don't hook with a fighter that's hooking. That you, you don't hook with a hooker, right? So with that being said, the only way I see that fight playing out is a, is a big knockout. And I think it'd be a chance for Ryan Garcia to deal with a pressure fighter, maybe work a bit more on his boxing skills, but ultimately give the people they want to see with a big knockout, I'll get to former world champion. So that'd be a good fight. And then um, last but not least, I think this fight be probably one of the most interesting ones too. Ryan Garcia versus Brandon Lee. Yes, I think Brandon Lee versus Ryan Garcia is one of the most interesting fights that could be made, could be made at 140 because they kind of both have similar careers. You know, both guys um, are notable names in that division. Both guys garner a lot of interest and a lot of hype. Both guys have a lot of critics and both guys have a lot of questions as well. Um, they've both been dropped. I mean, Ryan's case, he's been knocked out and dropped. Brandon Lee's been dropped. Um, they're both kind of at a similar stage in their career. And I think, um, again, on the West Coast, that's a big fight. That, that, that's a good fight. Um, you know, Brandon Lee, very explosive guy. He's looking to really make a name for himself in boxing. What better way to make a name for himself than by fighting a guy like Ryan Garcia, who, just like, like I said earlier, fifth highest gate in Vegas. Um, you know, uh, 1.2 million pay-per-view buys. Um, be a hell of a fight and then for ryan garcia brandon lee's a fighter that you know he's not looked at to be an elite 140 pounder but this is a guy that's 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 really um you know he's, he's a solid contender he's a solid contender and by beating him that that that's a good way to you know make your way into the 140 division so those are, when i think about ryan garcia those are the three fights i'm looking at 140 for him R roly amiro brandon lee jose amirez those, those are the three that I like the most. Um, let me know what you guys think. And how do you guys think about Ryan Garcia? What do you think about him at 140? And how do you think he fares at 140? I want to hear from you guys. Uh, the story is not over. Ryan can still become champion. I, and, and I think he's got all the, all, the, all the talent in the world, if applied correctly, if he if he gets with the proper coach and listens to him. Because personally, I don't think Joe Goosen really is showing him much. And I don't think he listened to Reynoso when he had him because he was a young kid who had the world at his feet, all the girls telling him he was handsome and all this bullshit. So... Um, I think he has to find a coach that works for him, that he listens to, that he respects. And um, that's on him. It's on him to listen. I'm just giving my suggestions. But, uh, yeah, let me, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Dania. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on The Untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, Click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.